coming up. Oh yeah! It's potential love interests. Oh. Can you name me for Stone of Fire Royale? Stung you, David. <laughs> <laughs> you pick a series that I don't really like. Oh my gosh. Um. Oh shoot. I shouldn't have done this. Um. Uh. It's Kafka. Just gold yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Luke from Tales of the Abyss. Cloud. Um. Celeste. No. Angel, rocket, crossbow on wrist thing. Okay, I'll take that. Tiger, what about you? I I just said fist. Thought that fist probably... for Renoa. <laughs> for Renoa, yeah. she's a fight with Tifa. More like Tifa. Tifa. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Okay. Oh yeah, Trish, Trish isn't on the scales conviction, is she? She's no, I don't. I don't think so. She's not. Then I lose. You have. You have. Yeah, I was <laughs> Benedict. 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 Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute, okay. Serenora. Serenora is not on the scales of conviction either. He's not a participant. Oh, you're right, because he's the hero. <laughs> yeah. Five seconds I go you're off the You're right. He oh, I love nervous. this. <laughs> he, went, he takes the stars. That's like the, the mini games. You're pulling stars, and then he just blows these storms. Halfway there. Yeah, to, to, into the west, and it's it's just all about causing havoc. And uh, yeah, the metal has something to do with that. <laughs> Life in Japan with a Miyazaki man. Figuring it out game show episode 3. I hope that intro has whetted your appetite. Wow, what a crazy episode. David, Vince, the gaming shelf, Zygor Gaming. You don't want to miss this episode. Here we go. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Miyazaki Man podcast, Figuring It Out Game Show Edition. This is episode 3, and I'm delighted to be joined again by Zygor and Taylor from the last episode. How are you guys doing? Hey, doing well. Thanks. Great, man. It's fun to be back. This is a great show. Very innovative concept. Much appreciated. And special guest today, David Vince. How you doing, my hey, man? Love your channel. How are you? Love your stuff. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. My dog is barking in the background. I'm about to beat her. Well, very excited. <laughs> very excited for the show, I'm sure. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. So today, one, we're going to do a new format. It's going to be a free fixture format, free new kind of game formats. We go with the original one to start off with. So Multifier 10 questions to start off with how many can you name in 30 seconds same as the last show edition i'll say a question we'll go around in a circle and you'll one up each other i can say four i can say six i can say ten etc when you want to pass it on and give someone a go you just say pass or go for it man or go on let's see you do it then and then yep they'll have 30 seconds to name that amount of things in in a particular series or topic after that i ask you kindly to get a notepad or a whiteboard or anything to write on we're going to have a quick fire round okay so you're going to have 10 seconds to answer my question and you just write it on your noteboard. You have to write something down, okay? If you write nothing, you lose a point. Anything that comes mm -hmm. to mind, you might get it. Who knows? It'll be fun either way, okay? So that's a quick fire round. And the last one, a little bit of a surprise. It's going to get your creative juices going, a bit of innovation here. We're going to be designing an authentic, original RPG. But I'm not going to tell you how it works yet, okay? So we'll get to it when we get to it, <laughs> okay? Without further ado, let's go straight into it. So 10 questions, 30 seconds. How many can you name? Final Fantasy X, how many Blitzball playable characters that can play in a Blitzball game can you name? Oh, <laughs> so we'll go around. <laughs> Thinking back, oh, that team, that game, that mini game, man, getting the. The mini game black. that I never won once, and I completely was just like, <laughs> okay, I think I'll just make a sandwich while I lose and just. <laughs> <laughs> the Orox <laughs> won in his game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, my goodness. Like, I finally built the team that I really wanted, but then I never got that sigil to appear for Wacker's ultimate weapon. So I just had to reset, reset, reset team and lost lost my data until it came up. But anyway, let's go around. Zygor, how many can you name in 30 seconds? Two. I got two, man. Two. Excellent. Taylor, what about you? That's what I got, so I can't name more than two. <laughs> yeah, I got two. I got two. Sorry. You got two. I got two. It's yeah. on Zygor straight away. What an opening. <laughs> two in 30 seconds. Let's count you in. Three, two, one, go. Titus Waka. <laughs> there we go. Those are my two. <laughs> yeah. <same. laughs> Notice I said Titus. That's that's a bone of contention right there too. Yep. Our good friend Titus. Titus. The fan ha, ha, ha. Base. Yeah. Absolutely. I noticed by the way, watching back, I don't know if I unfairly penalized Derek for the being the most annoying player because Taylor, that ha 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 was criminal. Cloud um, Yuna Titus. Ha 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 ha. 
<laughs> trying to do it just as bad as he did it in the game. <laughs> Absolutely. And to motivate you to give your absolute best performance, I completely forgot, but we always have prizes on offer on the Miyazaki Man podcast shows. So we've got a nice selection here. Taylor, there's one here that I think you'll be absolutely dying to get, so you're going to give it your absolute best. Oh, boy. You'll know when it comes up, but first and foremost, whoever comes first gets a choice between the anniversary pack Tales of Festive Celebration Cake. So this is free figures on a celebration cake, 20th anniversary of the Tales of series. Oh, That's cute. Who are those figures? Do you know? Yeah, so we've got the, the hero of um, Vesperia. Okay, so and, Yuri. Yep. And I can't remember the other two names. And I'm then sure. two other people that I can't recognize. One looks like Leon from Tales of Destiny, and then I think the oh, middle okay, guy okay, okay. is yeah. the main character from Zillia 2. I forget his name, though. Oh, yes. Lugger. Zillia, Zillia, Zillia 2. Lugger. Yes. Lugger. Yeah. Yes. I feel like such a boomer during these figurine discussions. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm, okay. I'm right with you there, Zygor. I'm like, a figurine? Mm. I have a Kirby doll. That's about it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, for display pieces, it's not just figurines. So we've got a lovely Asbel. Oh, that's Asbel! Oh, Asbel, our boy cute. right here. Indeed, indeed. So the winner can choose between the, the cake, the Asbel War Scroll. Speaking of Asbel, my, my cup today is representing our little Asbel Lant. Nice. The, uh, little <laughs> we also have by the way I just picked up a random selection I've got way too many war scrolls but uh, we've got another Tales of, of War Scroll is this Bazaria? oh nice, Bizarre, yeah. Yeah, Bizarre, nice. Yeah, yeah. Velvet and yeah. Lafacet we should do a name the Tales characters my god we're all naming them you never know <laughs> you might you might lucky Blitzball characters nobody knows Tales characters hey <laughs> <laughs> oh we got another Tales one I might have just picked up the Tales series oh my goodness oh, yeah I love this oh that's cute yeah, this is really good yeah cool. so these are all first prize choices actually second prize can also choose between them but first gives on first prize and we have a little special um, or, I think Taylor this might be the one that um, gets your your motivation sky high so I know you like your Persona 4 so we've got the lovely, oh, lovely lady. Oh boy, with all of them in their kimonos, that's awesome. Absolutely, right? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful B2. Well, it's got piece of material is really nice as well, by the way. So that's that one. <coughs> um, just to change it away from that series. I know, uh, Dave, you did a video on, on this series as well. And this is actually really, really nice material. I think this might be the best material of all the War Scrolls. So we have our Hyperdimension oh. Acuna. <laughs> lovely lady. <laughs> Yeah, I did a video on this. It doesn't mean that I liked it, but I did a video on it. <laughs> Awareness of them, for sure. Okay, so first place gets to choose between that. Second place gets the second dibs. And third place gets a nice memento, little Dragon Ball Z acrylic stand. Ah, <laughs> nice. Cool. The big right. prize. Absolutely. Let's carry on with the show. So how many soundtracks from the Chrono Trigger OST can you name in 30 seconds? Okay, we did Chrono Cross last time. Back to the classics, Chrono Trigger. How many soundtracks on the Chrono Trigger OST can you name? Starting with you, Taylor. I, I got nothing. I don't, I don't know any of the names of the songs. I'm going <laughs> to pass on this one. <laughs> David, over to you. That's the problem is the names of the songs. You recognize um, the tune? I can go with, I'll say three. Three. All right, Zygo, over to you. Um, There's a few that come to mind. I'll say four. Four. Okay, here we go. Oh, God. David, over to you. Name that tune. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? More than four, David? Oh, no. No. No? no? Okay, Zygor, up to the challenge again. Four in 30 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Corridors of Time, Robo, Magus, Frog. There we go, just the characters, right? <laughs> Frog team, Magus team. I think, I think they're just named the character names, I think. So. Yeah, you get about Oh, well, eight. hell, I should have said like seven then. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works. Excellent. So Zygor, you're if taking a, a healthy Check me deep. on that. If that's not true, you know. I think that you're game, right. There's Carnos right. theme, Rabu's theme, Frog's theme, Magus theme. theme. Yeah, yeah. Scarlet's yeah, theme. Yeah. Big ones, yeah. yeah. And yeah. there's something about like wind. There's something to do with wind or something. Wind corridor. Or, I don't but know. But Corridors yeah, of yeah, Time is the best song. Which is the one that immediately came to my mind. That's true. I think that's the Zeal Kingdom. Um, it is, yes, yeah. Theme. Yes, that's true. Battle theme, ba boss theme, main <laughs> theme. <laughs> you reel them off. Yeah, it's yeah. the hack right there. I know, Man, I know. I, I, just gotta, I just gotta cheese these things then. Okay, I see how this works. I see how this works. I <laughs> got you. you. <laughs> and to encourage, encourage bigger number answers, okay? This time, whoever names the most of a particular question in 30 seconds, we're going to give plus two points. 
Okay, so we've oh. gone with two and four at the moment. <laughs> Whoever can name your 15 in 30 seconds will get a plus two bonus at the end, okay? Okay, next question. Persona 5 Royale, how many of the romantic partners of Joker can you name? How many of his potential love interests oh. can you name in Persona 5 Royale? <laughs> Starting with you, David. <laughs> you pick a series that I don't really like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I am aware of... Um, two characters names in persona 5 so i'll go with two <laughs> we'll go with two okay zygo over to you i'm gonna say negative two and i think taylor is just gonna desecrate our yeah he's just gonna <laughs> destroy this because well i'm not a persona fan is he gonna go for a high number though for the bonus points or are you gonna well play go it three <laughs> um so what did you say david you said two uh-huh you said two. i got two <laughs> I, I can picture a lot of the characters in my head. I just don't remember their names. I mean, I'll say five just so it's a little bit higher, but yeah, okay. I don't, know if, I, I don't know if I can go that much higher because he's yeah, showboating we'll, now. <laughs> he's like, you only said two. I take that and double it and add another one. Come on. That's right. Exactly. I've got a whole finger full. Yeah. Five, fingers. Here we five go. for Persona 5, right? I mean, might as well. There we go. Yep. Royalty over to you. Three, two, one, go. Okay. So on Futaba... Makoto, um, see, I, I thought I, I knew this is where I was gonna get stuck. Oh, uh, Haru, uh, Ch- I think Chihiro is her name, the the psychic yeah. reader girl. Yep. And that's five. Yep. Um, that's five. Yep, that is five. That is five. So we got girls like Kawakami, Tai-Kenizu. the teacher. Yep. I mean, I can yeah. keep going. But... <laughs> this guy Tai-Tai knows doctor, Persona right? so well, dude. Oh, tied to Kemi, yeah, to yeah. Kemi. Oh yeah, oh yeah, is is a report or something, isn't she? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, is Ryuji yeah. not an option? He was one of the pe- the two people that I knew. He's there, oh, unfortunately there's no uh, none of the males are romance. Oh well, shit! Yeah. I should have just said one then. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That's unfortunate, isn't it? I mean, there are a lot of uh, males in that game. You know, explore the different love interests for sure. So this one, Dave. I think this is in your remit here. How many Dragon Quest monsters can you name? Oh Dave, gosh. Um... <laughs> I'll say five right now. Five. Let's see Zygo. how much more we can go. Um, I'll say six. Six. We're going high, Taylor. Ooh, pass on this one. I don't know my Dragon Quest monsters. <laughs> I'll go with seven. You, seven. Seven. Zygo. Ooh. I'll go eight. eight. Nine. Nine. I'll let you do it, David. I think you got wow. this one. Nine. Okay. He's got nine. nine. Okay. Ready? Ready? Two. One. Go. Blue slime, red slime, ghost, skeleton, drakey, magic drakey, um, axe knight. There's a droll, um, magician, wizard. I think you've done it. Warlord. It. <laughs> wow. Absolutely smashed it. So good. Okay. My favorite is the uh, one knight stand. It's the knight riding a slime. Oh, uh, see, <laughs> oh, see, yeah. see, you're thinking of Dragon Quest monsters. Quest monsters, we're going with dragon warrior monsters right now. <laughs> <laughs> you have oh, all the little, punny, the, the little punny names. Yeah. Yeah. I just went straight to <laughs> NES. Excellent. Yeah, that was, that was good. That was a good performance. No, we're, we're tying up here. So Zygo, they're catching up. David's on one, Taylor's on one, Zygo, you're on two. So, I don't like it. Go. I don't like it. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And there might be some gamesmanship from last time. Do you remember bumping up the numbers? Because if someone can't do the challenge in 30 seconds, the other two people get one point. So oh, nice. There might be some gamesmanship to uh, bump the numbers up, challenge them, push them a bit. <laughs> and the next one, the next one might be an interesting one. How many social media platforms can you name in 30 seconds? Social media platforms. Anything. Not just present or the old school ones as well. Okay. Starting with you, Zygo. How many can you name? Four. Four. Taylor. Um, I could probably do five. Five? David? I'll, I'll say six. Six? Zygo? Seven. Seven. Taylor. Uh, man. I guess eight. I think I just eight. Eight. I'm, I had yeah. eight. David? Nine. Nine? <laughs> Zygo? Ten. Ten? Wow. Double digits? Taylor. I don't even social know. media platforms. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a lot of uh, just lower tier ones that aren't super popular, but I, I don't know if I can do 11. I'm going to have to pass on this. Okay, we're on 10. David. <sighs> mm, 
God, I think Where I'm going to get screwed. Um, <laughs> 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 I think I'll get screwed, but I'm going to say 11. Oh, my God. 11. Okay. So I go, well, 11. Oh, man. I'll say 12. 12. Wow. wow. Okay. I'll, I'm going to let you go with 12. I'm going to let you 12 do 12 social media yeah. platforms. I missed one every two seconds. I'm, I'm Three, keeping count now. <laughs> two, one, go. Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, Truth Social, OnlyFans, my favorite, um, <laughs> YouTube, Twitch, um, LinkedIn, Odyssey, um, Rumble. Um, two more. Ustream. Vi- Vimeo. Vimeo. Okay. Yeah, you screwed wow. in. Well done. Well done. Just in time. Excellent. As long as the video ones count, I mean, I would count. Yeah, they do. They're social media platforms. Yeah, you can interact. Absolutely. Well thought. Did you say MySpace? Did you say? I dropped the MySpace bomb, man. I'm taking it back. Friendster. Taking it back to the golden years. <laughs> yeah. See, I think that you went into dating platforms too. And if I thought of <laughs> dating platforms, I'd have been like oh, Bumble, Grinder, Scruff. Like, oh my god, there's so many fucking oh, yeah. dating platforms. <laughs> you could have went to the high school straight away. Dude. I know. <laughs> yeah. well, Only fans is like, not. Yeah. OnlyFans is not actually my favorite, by the way. Disclaimer. We'll that part, what you just said in, and we'll leave OnlyFans as the favorite platform. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Very old school here. One close to my heart. In Vandal Hearts, how many classes can you name in Vandal Hearts? PS1 Classic. Strategy RPG. Starting with you, Taylor. Zero. I don't... I mean, I could take lucky guesses, just generic ones, but I don't... I don't... I don't <laughs> David, over to you. Mm, I'll go with two. Two, yep. Zygo? Man, it's been so long. I did videos on these. I'll say three, but... I'll yeah, say I'll four. Say four. Okay. Zygo? I'm going to let let David do it. Let him just okay. crush it. Okay. Hero? Oh, hero? I'll count again. Three, oh. two, one, go. Hero, archer, cleric, wizard... There's like bandolier or something. Is the... Yeah, bandolier. That's yeah. right. Yep, you've done it. Um, you've hit it. Did I hit it? Done. You hit it already. There yeah. you go, done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Very good. good. And then Sky Knight and Hawk Knight. And there's some weird names for the advanced, like archers and all that kind of stuff. I can't can't remember off the top of my head. But there's like some weird mechanisms where it fires an arrow out of a big machine and, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah it's I'm been doing. a minute since I played Vandal <laughs> Hearts. Like, Same. I remember that. Like, the, the main thing that I remember about Vandal Hearts was I was like, this is like Mortal Kombat meets oh, the blood. These strategy <laughs> RPGs because like you chop off the guy's head and there'll be a stream of blood flying up there. And it's like, oh, what? So awesome. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the best part. Just don't play Flames of Judgment. That's my only oh, advice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't play. <laughs> and Vandal, Vandal Hearts 2 good. was kind of weird as well because Vandal Hearts 2, the enemy moves simultaneously as you. So mm. exactly. you, you, you think they're there and you're chopping empty space and they're chopping empty space and a lot of the rounds are just kind of missed because... Yeah, that's kind of obnoxious. Yeah, very strange. <laughs> very, very bizarre. Very bizarre. Okay, here we go. Jumping back to uh, the War Scroll topic here. It actually does appear as a question. Probably why I chose the War Scrolls. How many tales of main characters can you name and the game that they're from? So you have to name the game that they're from and the main characters Ooh. to get one point. Okay? okay. How many can you name? Starting with David. Oh... Um, I'll start with four. Four. As I go. <laughs> I could do two, so pass. <laughs> the four? first two. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're on four. Uh, I can do... I'll, I'll do five. All right. Okay, David. Protagonist. I'll say six. Six. Taylor. Ooh. This is risking it, but I'll say seven just for fun. Seven. See where this oh, goes. Oh, God. <laughs> um shit um god would you say seven yeah seven tales of games and their heroes the protagonist i think i'll let you have it at seven seven okay seven. Taylor, Taylor, stepping up to the plate okay. three two one go okay so we have stan from tales of destiny uh asbel from grace's f uh oh shoot I shouldn't have done this. Um, uh, it's Kefka. There's gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Luke from Tales of the Abyss. Cloud. Um, 
Celeste. No. This is this was that Derek's was strategy. <laughs> just take the headphones off. Oh man. One. Oh my god. Oh, blanking on the names. Blanking on the names. Blanking on the names. I'm like, I can picture their face. I can't think of their yeah. names. It's the worst. David it's is the worst. The... It's the worst. David David's playing you. the super Derek role on okay. this episode. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed, yes, yes. I, I have a feeling that Derek was very, very keen to win the last show because it's, it's radio silence since then. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Cool, cool. Okay, question number eight. In Final Fantasy VIII, how many of the Guardian forces, the GFs, can you name, including the ones that are non-junctionable? They also are acceptable, okay? Because you can't junction all of them. But including the non-junctionable ones, how many guardian forces can you name? Starting with you, David. I'll start with three. Three. Zygo. Four. Four. Taylor. Uh, let's see. Four. Man, I guess I'll say five. Five. David. You had to choose my favorite Final Fantasy, didn't you? God. <laughs> I'll, I'll say six. I'll say six. Representing it, six. <laughs> Zygo. Oh man. I'll say seven, but I'm not that confident. <laughs> Full sense of security here. Taylor? I can't do eight. Yeah, I'm, I'm tapped out there. Seven. I'll, David? Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Favorite Final kind of Fantasy? Final Fantasy eight? It's not. <laughs> That would have been very sarcastic. Final Fantasy VIII sucks. Are you kidding me? I hate Final Fantasy VIII. I'm with, I'm with you. I'm not a big fan. Oh, not yeah, a yeah. fan. Oh, my gosh. There are some weird, weird Guardian forces in this game as well. Yeah. So, Zygo, seven, over to you. Three, two, one, go. Ifrit, Shiva, Quetzalcoatl, um, Odin, Siren, um, Diablos, Brothers, um, Carbuncle was in there. Yeah, there you go. Seven. Leviathan. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. There you go. There you go. Bang on. All right. I thought I was actually, rusty on it. In Final Fantasy VIII, I think there was like an exclusive um, little add-on that you could get that introduces two secret um, Guardian forces, only available in Japan as well. There's something called there's a there's a Moogle and there's some weird other animal that you can get as an exclusive Guardian force as well. Oh really? The, uh, that's cool. Was, yeah. was that with the little PlayStation Pocket thing that was only released? Yes, that's in... the one. Okay, mm. that's yeah, the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. So you can play along the side. You get two extra Guardian forces, but only exclusive to Japan. I think. <coughs> okay. Cool. Um, last two questions in this particular round. So a modern game for the Switch. In Triangle Strategy, how many characters that participate in the Scales of Conviction can you name? Okay, characters that participate in the Scales of Conviction. Saigo, <laughs> <laughs> starting with you. Oh man, um, man, I love that game. It's my favorite Switch game. I'll say, I'll say I can st- four, four. Four. Taylor. Zero. I don't. I don't remember anybody's name from that game. It's a great game. I don't remember a single character's name. <laughs> That's the problem is remembering their names, especially those characters' names. Um, you can see their faces. I know. I know. I have four in my mind, but he already said four, and I feel like if I say. four, four or five then he's gonna like screw me <laughs> <laughs> um you know what wait he's thinking of the job i'm gonna have to push it here david <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go go for it go for it go for it oh okay zygor stage is yours three two one go uh sarah noah roland frederica um trish yeah okay um, there you go Okay. Oh, yeah. Trish, Trish isn't on the scales of conviction, is she? She's no, I don't, I don't think so. If she's not, well, then sure. I lose. You have, you have yeah, I would, <laughs> Benedict. 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 Yeah. Okay. Wait okay. a minute, Serenaro. is not on the scales of conviction either. He's not a participant. Oh, you're right, because he's the hero. <laughs> yeah. Five seconds, I got You're right. Hewitt. Oh, I love Marvel. this. <laughs> Hewitt. Hewitt, right? Hewitt. Hewitt. Okay. Is Hewitt wow. on the scales of conviction? Which one's Hewitt? Isn't oh, she isn't the one with, like, the, one with the, the bird or something? Yeah. yeah, she is. Yeah, you've done it. You squeezed it on the very last second. <laughs> but as I, go, I almost screwed myself, yeah. Well, uh, Sarah Noah doesn't participate. He's just true. standing there. <laughs> like, yeah, true. Oh, I'm so angry. He's the Anna. convincer. I would have been, screw- been so screwed. Because I was like, he, he's Sarah the Noah, persuader, Frederica, yeah. Anna. And I was kind of... I love, that, I love that system, man. I hope they do a sequel to that game. I love mm-hmm. that game so much. It's fun. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Well, you know they're coming out with a... 
you know that they're coming out with a Final Fantasy Tactics like remaster in that, in mm. that same vein too. So in the same vein, so you can actually change the course of the game by decisions you make. No, but but uh, 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 what I meant was in the HD 2D remake. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, there. are they? I thought it was just going to be straight up really? uporting. I hadn't uh, heard PSP. that. That'd be sick. It was oh, part of the yeah. uh, NVIDIA leak, and everything else in the NVIDIA leak has been uh, true. true. Yeah. Sick, dude. Oh, can't can't wait for that. I know, David. You're you're the one for RPG news. You're you're well. <laughs> yeah. well more than RPG me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Quality. No, I go well done. You squeezed it at the very last second. There, I heard you wait in the background. Okay. Here we go. Everyone's been playing the the sequel, but in the original Octopath Traveler, how many locations can you name? And this includes cities, roads, dungeons, regions. They all count. How many places in the original Octopath Traveler? Can you name? Starting with you, Taylor. Uh, uh three. <laughs> three, yeah, <laughs> David. I wasn't really a fan of the first Octopath Traveler. I got through like the first couple of chapters of them, and then I was like, eh. So I wasn't really a fan. So yeah, can't really. Sorry. Can't be free. <laughs> it's a pass. Is I go over to you? It Taylor's gonna get this one, man. Taylor, okay. okay. Locations in Octopath Traveler. There can be regions, dungeons, cities, anything you like. Three. Okay. Two, one go I, I mean i think it's just like the grasslands frostlands coastlands i mean i think that's yes there you go <laughs> riverland <laughs> islands <laughs> yeah there you go i guess you could even mention the um the mythic land like what the depths of hell or whatever that book was called <laughs> good stuff okay that does it for the the quick fire 30 second round in terms of how many you can name here we go. Whiteboards, paper, oh. pens at the ready. <laughs> okay, so the only rule is in 10 seconds, you have to write down something. If it's close enough to the answer or we can interpret it correctly, you get the point, okay? Okay. So, first one. <laughs> is it whoever does it Noah? first or do you have to like, how, how is this working? Is that, does everybody so get a point? As long as the answer's correct, after, after 10 seconds elapses, everyone show up the answer you got <coughs> and then I'll just mark off the points whoever's got the right got answers. Okay. Speaking of which, by the way, the highest uh, number of questions answered correctly in the first round was Zygor with 12, I think, for the social media platforms. Mm. So the plus two is, is on your way there. Might be <laughs> crucial. First question in the whiteboard round. What is Renoa Hartley's weapon in Final Fantasy VIII? I'll accept an accurate description that kind of pictures it, okay? 10 seconds, off we go. Now. Three, two, one. Okay, let's see what you got. Uh, oh, this is backwards. Disc that, shooter. Disc shooter. <laughs> Wait, how do I... Oh, so yeah, that's it. That's it, Dave. Angel rocket crossbow on wrist thing. Okay, <laughs> that, I'll take that. So I got one. about you? I I just said fist, but that fist probably... for Renoa. <laughs> for Renoa, yeah. she's a fight with more like Tifa. Tifa. Yeah. yeah. Indeed, yeah, yeah. She's got that little, um, little boomerang shooting, yeah, whatever it is, thing on her wrist with... or whatever it is. Again, yeah, my yeah. favorite Final Fantasy. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> just for you, Dave. Okay, next one. Ten seconds. Who is the final obtainable Aeon in Final Fantasy X? Okay, ten seconds. Now, obtainable Aeon. And we're done. Okay, let's see what you got. Moving away there. Your, your himbo. Your himbo. Isn't that a Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix and Anima. Okay, I think none of these are correct. I believe it's the Magus Sisters, is it not? Okay, so I think I some of them can be acquired in any order, end, though. Kind of, yeah, get correct. them in any order. All the optional I'm pretty ones sure. at the end. I thought you have to get all of the other stuff before you can get the Magus Sisters. Is that not right? That could be right. Could I thought be. you have to get all of the other things and then you get a secret item to obtain a mega system. We'll put a question mark against that one. But uh, in case, you might I'll review the recording of this. And it turns out that I was a right. With the two key items now in hand, players can break the seal on the door to the Chamber of the Faith and head inside to obtain the eighth and final Aeon. The Mega Sisters. <laughs> and it's, it's worthwhile anyway because the final round, uh, we, need, we need to look at the comments. Well, how about anyway. this? We at least know it wasn't Phoenix. 
Was there even a phoenix in that game? <laughs> no, there isn't. I, I, I didn't think so. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my days. Quality comment. If I could award a point for that, I would. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I think you're actually Let's right. Get a point for humor. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the next question is, which game are these quotes from? Hey, boobs. This guy are sick. Shut up, sit your ass down, and drink your goddamn tea. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, go. What was Which the first quote? Is... Hey, boobs. Boobs. Okay. Okay. I think everyone should get this one with the this guy are sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's have a look. Hey, let's still scribbling away. Oh, I don't. Uh, yep. FF7. Just... Yeah. FF7. What have we got there? Final Fantasy 7. Okay, you got it in. You got it in just the time. Good stuff. That is a 7. That is a 7. Yep. Mm. Everyone gets a point there. This guy are sick, man. <laughs> this guy are sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of my favourites on the Dreamcast. In Skies of Arcadia, how many girls are part of your main party? So in Skies of Arcadia, how many girls are part of your main party? Three, two, one go. David's already confident. You're going to show everyone the answer now? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't look, so it's, it's all good. <laughs> okay, let's see what you got. David, spot on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love the plug. I love the plug. Okay, Taylor, who are the three girls? I have no idea. I've never played There are <laughs> three girls. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, who are the two girls then? Oh, Fina and uh, like Ika, I think her name Ica, is. Ika, yes. Yeah. It's Ica, the little bratty one. I should, I should get bonus points for that. Bonus points. <laughs> bonus points. Two bonus points. <laughs> yes, yes. You, if, if that was a thing, you'd be on three bonus points for, for the most humorous comments about the Phoenix and the, uh, the names, but unfortunately it's not a thing. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So, next question. What is the most powerful gear in Xenogears? Three... Two, one, go. Five seconds left. Three, two, one. Let's see what you got. Very good. <laughs> Very good. I, I take it. I wrote bleh. Bleh. <laughs> 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 I couldn't yeah. think of anything. Yeah, I'll accept Xeno Gears. The Xeno Gears this 2. The, 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 I have Xeno Gears 2. Yep. Uh, he has Xenogears. I have Xenogears too. Bonus points. <laughs> Bonus points. You see that two right there? Xenogears. That's a two. <laughs> it's an alternative form of the most powerful <laughs> gear. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna give each of you a point there. <laughs> okay. In any Genzo Suikuden game, name one true ruin bearer. So someone who holds a true ruin in any of the Suikuden games. Three, two, one, go. Believe you're smashing these. You're writing it down and looking straight away. You know. Yeah. You know what you're doing. <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's laying down the challenge. Okay, let's see what you got. I was gonna Reveal. put. Down, I put down the tier room bear, Simon, the first one, but then I erased one. Put down stallion. Stallion. Yeah. Oh, do do we accept stallion though? Because is that a true ruin? It's got true in the name, but it's not a true ruin, is it? The true holy ruin. It's the one that makes him go fast. It's the true ruin. Yeah. It, it's called the true holy ruin. But That's because it's, not... it's a true rune. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to defer to T Taylor and Zygel here. So there are 27 true runes in the Sakudan game. The rune that David mentioned has true in the name. But it's not a true rune, in, as in one of the 27. Did we give it to him or not? Well, I don't know. It's, I, I mean, can see the, from I his context, know. if it says that, it's a different context of true rune, so... Okay, maybe I, I would give context, him... David. I'm giving it. I'm giving you the point, David. What did I you write, Taylor? To... Simon, you wrote me. I wrote... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have all the true runes, baby. <laughs> King <laughs> Barbarossa <laughs> had the sovereign right, rune. He did. He did. Very good. Okay. Ooh. Indeed. That's actually quite clever, actually. The true holy rune. <laughs> yes. The, the fast one, isn't it? From Stallion. Yeah. Running, running around. Okay. I had other people, but I erased them because I was like, ah, oh, well, his name is it's called the true... So I was like, whatever. So. <laughs> Having done a bit of additional research, it was a mistranslation by the game developers. It should have actually been called the Godspeed Rune. On uh, technicality, we'll give it. So, 
in Final Fantasy 13, what is the full name of Lightning Sister? The full name of Lightning oh, Sister. God. Oh. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Everyone knows her first name. What's her full name? Two, one, boom. Let's have a look. Sarah, Sarah, I'll Sarah, I'll be I don't know if she has a real name. It's like Fallon, <laughs> Miyazaki, Mandy. I am everyone's sister. <laughs> Sarah, good first name, but the full name, Sarah Fallon. And Taylor, I'll give you that. <laughs> good stuff. Okay. What is the name of the weapon that Surge wields in Chrono Cross? Just a type of the weapon. Surge from Chrono Cross. Oh, Three, awesome. two, one. What is the weapon's name? Three, two, one, go. Let's see. This Again, one of my like favorite names. Yeah. Favorite yeah. Swallow? Games. Oh, <laughs> Swallow. Absolutely, David. It's a Swallow. Yeah. One of my favorite <laughs> games. <laughs> I, I will give you a bonus 10 points if you somehow get this, David. What is the Swallow based off of in, in real life? It's a sword. It's like a it's like a curved samurai sword thingamajigger, right? It's based off something historically in in real life. Not samurai sword. swords. <laughs> 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 so it's actually in Okinawa in Japan. So the boat, the oars in a boat, right, where you swing side to side oh. like this. It's actually based on that because you've got the double sided thing. They just put blades on the end of it. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, that kind of thing. Yes. I figured it was just okay. throwback to Chrono Sword. Oh, oh yeah, I yeah. I don't know. Beats Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of swords, what is the original name of the mana sword in Secret of Mana? What is the original name? Like like when you first pull it out of the yes. stone, it's called in the menu. Yes, you might have given the answer away there, David, but absolutely. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I think everyone should thank David for this round because I think that has cleared it up in everyone's mind. <laughs> uh, okay, let's have a look. Uh, no? Uh, Rusty Sword, it is yet. Sword of the Stone. Isn't that Excalibur? Muramasa? <laughs> That's Chrono Cross again, isn't it? <laughs> so it's in every square game. <laughs> Rusty Sword. Rusty yeah. Sword. Yes. <laughs> it's a Rusty Sword. Yes. It's lost its shine. It's been stuck in the stone for ages. It's gone mouldy and rusty. Okay. Away from games here. This is bringing you back to the childhood. At least, I think we're all of the same generation, more or less. What is the first Pokemon that Ash Ketchum catches in the whole series? What is the very first Pokemon that he catches in the series? In the, Three, in the game? Three. In the series, in anime series. Oh, I've never anime watched it. Um, oh no, <laughs> you can take a guess. That was, I was pounds. in college when that came out. I don't know, beats the hell out of me. Five, four, three, two, one. What have we got? Pikachu, Caterpie, Caterpie's correct. Charizard, <laughs> that would be an OP <laughs> first Pokemon for sure. A Caterpie, yes, Taylor. Dang it, dude. What was it? A Caterpie? It wasn't a what fan either. Caterpie, yeah. It was a Caterpie. Okay. <laughs> okay, brilliant. The points are racking up very, very rapidly here. For the final round, we're going to get a little creative here. So it's a bit of creative storytelling. An exciting thing about this round is we're going to get your fans on board as well, okay? So there's going to be a plus five points for whoever's RPG game is the best and i'm going to show you how it works okay. <laughs> you're going to go around in a circle here and you're going to tell me <coughs> hero's name okay first name and last name of your made-up rpg we haven't started yet says so igor just throw out a name out there any name that you want for your for a game the hero's name uh simon simon <laughs> simon what simon simon star killer star killer i love it okay taylor yeah. Hero. Uh, let's see. Yoshi Mizu. <laughs> Yoshi Mizu. Very Japanese themed. I, I like yeah. it. And David, what about you? I'm going to go with the best RPG name ever. Edge Maverick. Because it's so edgy. <laughs> Edge Maverick. <laughs> Edge Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And what is the title? What are they known as? What, what is their nickname in this game that you're creating? So, Zygo, Simon Starkiller, what is his nickname? Figurine Master. <laughs> I see where this is going. Okay, Taylor, well, Yoshi Mizu, Yoshi Mizu. What about you? Um, What's his nickname? The Storm of the East. 
Storm <laughs> of the East. This sounds very much like um, either Dungeons and Dragons or or Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. And Edge Maverick, what was his nickname? He's the Edge Lord, of course. <laughs> He's <the Edge's laughs> gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and give me one nature element that they are associated with. It could be water, fire, metal, gold, whatever you want. Zygor, what element? Um, water. Water. Okay, Taylor. Yoshimizu. Uh, I guess I'll do lightning. Lightning. And David, for Edge Maverick. I'll go with metal. Metal goes with that shiny <laughs> okay. edge. Excellent. We've got everything we need to start this game, but your characters are not going to be your characters. We're going to mix it up slightly. So we're going to have Simon Starkiller, <laughs> Stor who's the Storm of the East, associated with metal. That's going to be your Taylor. Taylor, that is your character and your game. <laughs> You're going to have one minute to pitch to me the game. I'll give you a moment to think about this. You've got Simon Starkiller. <laughs> he's a Storm of the East and he's associated with metal. Okay. We are gaming producers here. You pitch to us in a, in a one minute pitch <laughs> this game. And then afterwards, each of us can ask you two questions about your game. Whoever creates the <coughs> best game as voted by in the comment section gets five points at the end, okay? And therefore we'll do the prizes afterwards. Okay, I'll count you in. Three, two, one. Simon Starkiller, the Storm of the East, Metal. Go. Yeah, so he's a star killer because what he does is he has the... He uses his metal to attract stars from the sky, right? And he harnesses the power of stars. And then he takes the stars and he makes storms out of them. And, and, and he likes to attack people that live in the West. That's why he's from the East. So he, he takes the stars. That's like the, the mini games. You're pulling stars. And then he just blows these storms. Halfway there. Yeah, to, to, into the West, and it's it's just all about causing havoc, and uh, yeah, the metal has something to do with that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the game. Can you just picture it? Him pulling out stars, making storms with his metal something. It's so cool. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, I know. You better vote for it. <laughs> yeah, the hype for this. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the, the presentation, the pitch. Mm. I, I think I, I can visualize what game I gave you. Game of the Year material about. right there. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Okay, David, over to you. You have Yoshimizu, who is the figurine master, and he's associated with lightning. So Yoshimizu, the figurine master, associated with lightning. Three, two, one, go. So Yoshimizu, he comes from a very small town on the beach and he likes to create little figurines. So he goes out to the beach where he summons lightning, and when the lightning hits the sand, it creates glass. And then he's able to formulate little figurines using the little glass lightning. And it's almost like a Stardew Valley sort of thing, where you go around, you help the townspeople, and you make little figurines for them, you can color them, you can go to like the, the little volcano dungeon, you can get lava and put it in with your glass, make it all nice and red, it'll be super cute. You can go and you can date your little girls and your little boys, and then you can give them little figurines, and they'll be like, oh, it's a cute little gift, and we love this. It'd be wonderful. Um, and that's what he does with his lightning-based powers. And he might go to the farm, and he can clear the farm fields and be like, there's a tree block in my path. Boom, bitch, you're done. And then send out the lightning, and then clear his little fields, and he can do his farming and his little figurines. So there you go. Excellent. Nicely tidied up with three seconds to go. Perfect. Sounds very much like a Animal Crossing meets Harvest Moon meets... It works for me, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Monster Farm. Absolutely. And definitely last but not least, we have Edge Maverick, who conveniently is the Good Edge Lord. <laughs> and is associated with water cycle. Edge Maverick, the Edge Lord, who's associated with water. Three, two, one, go. Oh, man. All right. Edge Maverick is a ship's captain from the kingdom of Altiris, and he sails along the water. And he's subjected to very strict uh, uh, restrictions on how he's to conduct his affairs, eluding the ships of opposing powers. Um, but there was one problem. He started to act uncouth and profane, so he became known as the Edgelord. He was therefore exiled from this role by his kingdom. And in seeking revenge, he's forced to recruit a gang of ruffians to coup the kingdom that won that exiled him. <laughs> Very detailed. I like it. Twenty seconds left. I go. Keep going. 
Um, <coughs> he's also a very fine fellow that is a jokester. He's a jester. He's kind of a class clown of sorts. Um, he has very strong loyalty to other people, but he's also good at making enemies. Really? Very good, very good. So we have three very, very different games in the making here. <laughs> so the stage is open up to questions now. Taylor, let's go back to you. Okay, so <coughs> let's limit it to one question each because I can't actually remember all of the details in all of the, in all of the games. <laughs> so my, my, question, my question to you, Taylor, is yeah. tell me about the, the variety of stars and how are the, are the stars different? How, how do you interact with the stars in your game? Yeah, it's it's like an action game, right? So you're pulling them down, absorbing them. They all have different <laughs> spells that are tied from them. You can pull a star from one galaxy. Maybe it, it has fire elements. You pull another. Maybe it's got some ice elements. Another one, you know, it, it just it it's random, right? It's it's, it's almost <laughs> like a, it's almost like a roguelike in a way. You you're constantly pulling star. You just don't know what you're gonna get, and that's the fun of the game. One person's experience is gonna be different from another's. Excellent. This kind of sounds like Kingdom Hearts to me. You go to different worlds and there's, there's stars and characters everywhere. <laughs> like, oh, David, what question do you have for, for Taylor about his game? I want to know why he hates the West so much. What did the West ever do to him? <laughs> you know, the West, the West captured and murdered his family and oh, no. when he was a very young kid. So he grew up revenge. and he was like, I'm just going to train my whole life so I can get revenge on the West. And so, and he doesn't even give give them the opportunity to know is him they're just like wow these storms are coming i don't know who it is it's like yeah i know i'm the one that's attacking you guys but you'll never know you'll never know it was the, the storm of the east <laughs> yeah that's <Storm> right <laughs> <laughs> and zygo what would you like to know about the game um which systems is it on <laughs> <laughs> that's a is great there a question demo? is there a demo so, so we were planning on releasing a demo a week before launch, uh, and it's going to be the opening chapter, so you can transfer it to the the full release. And it'll be right now. We're only doing PS4, PS5, and Switch. Maybe Xbox later if, if there's enough demand, and maybe PC if we can figure out how to make a PC port. <laughs> Well thought of, yes, yes. I, I can tell there's going to be a lot of hype for this game. I know you absorb lots of stars. It's a revenge plot, mm -hmm. something to do with East versus West. So <laughs> very, very intriguing for for sure. Okay, we're over to Yoshimizu, the figurine master. Um, association with lightning, the floor is is open. What I want to know is tell tell me more about these kind of figurines that are created from the sand. How do they interact? What, what can you do with them? Are they playable characters? Are they accessories? What do you remember? Do you remember Guardians Crusade? where you could have those living toys and you can go around and you can collect them. You can do the same sort of thing here as you go out and you craft and you create and you summon your lightning powers into the sand and go away little Koopa. There you go. Okay. And you can <laughs> create your very own little living toys and they can join you in battles um, as well. Yes. Oh, and what if they're defeated? Are they gone forever? Like in... Oh no. In permadeath does not exist in my game. I hate permadeath. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Zygo and Taylor, what questions have you got about this game? Well, you said you can date in this game, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell, tell me, pitch me on the waifus. The waifus are obviously the most important thing in, this, in these types of games. Tell uh, me yes. about the waifus you can romance in this game. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm very keen Well, you have your blonde, your brunette, and your redhead, and they all have huge boobs. Of course, you have to have the <laughs> biggest boobs you've ever seen in your entire life. And um, there's always, there's going to be the Sundare, and she's going to be the brunette. There's going to be the little sweet one, the little homemaker girl. She's going to be the blonde. And then, I don't know, the redhead's going to be the fiery little bitchy one. So those are going to be <laughs> three little waifus that you can date. Okay. Have they got names? Big boobs, yes. <laughs> I've got names for these, these booby uh, girls. We oh, red gosh. Hand, one, one, one. <laughs> You've already <laughs> asked your question. You get one question. <laughs> okay, not going with you. Not going with you. Uh, is there any DLC content planned for this? <laughs> DLC <laughs> content. I don't believe in DLC for my game. I think that all of the game should be included in the first purchase. You get the complete product with your game, no DLC whatsoever. And if there ever will be, it will be free. Oh. Nice. Okay, very progressive, very progressive. Yes. Okay, so as I go over to you, Edge Maverick, the Edge Lord, associated with water. That is your, your game and your character. So I want to know specifically what makes him edgier than the other characters. It sounds as though 
a lot of the characters in this game could be very dark, very edgy. What makes him stand out as the edge lord? Because his whole profession is kind of locked into like a series of very strict behaviors, right? And if you deviate from that, you lose your stature. It's kind of a class system based upon um, being able to kind of conform to that. And he's a, he's an outlier. He's an aberration. He's kind of a, a shoot-from-the-hip kind of guy. And that's why he kind of, uh, you know, ruffled a lot of feathers. <laughs> Absolutely. I like that. Okay, the floor is open. David, Taylor, what questions have you got for Zygo? Oh, gosh. Um, what is the world like? You, you talked about how there was him, he was like a ship captain, and then there was another kingdom. But what else is going on in this world? Tell me about your world. Sure, there's two primary kingdoms. He serves the kingdom of Altiris. There's also the kingdom of Argyle. They've been feuding off and on for millennia, but... Recently, there's been kind of more of a uh, kind of a an armistice, kind of a uh, you know a subsiding of tensions. But his exile really tips kind of the hand in terms of global dominance in the favor of Argyle because he is raising ruffians to attack um, Altiris and make it vulnerable at a time in which Argyle can take advantage of that too. This is well thought out, yeah. So I you've see got that. Uh, yeah. lots of the twists in, in the plot. Excellent, Taylor. What's your question? <coughs> so he, we're talking about Edge, Ma Ed, Edge Maverick, right? Yeah, he's he's this chaos creator. Do you have any party members in the game, or is he the only playable character you have? And if you have other party members, what are they like? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, there, the, his his best friend is a guy named Magon. He is actually a wizard that joins him on his adventure as a captain. He is much more kind of colloquial, much more um, diplomatic. He kind of serves as his chief advisor. He doesn't shoot from the hip. This is a guy that provides balance toward Edge Master, Edge Lord. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I this forgot is my the galaxy meets Warhammer, isn't it? Um, he, he's the primary. He's the primary one, but Edge recruits a host of characters afterward that more or less serve him, and they're not really um, there to necessarily benefit him directly, but they might have other gripes toward Altiris for other reasons. They cut off trade, um, they've kind of suppressed insurrections, things like that. This sounds as though this has been written for years yeah, rather than one minute, one minute script. He's had I, this I like ready. Like He's like, all right, my dream RPG. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it sounds like you've already created this RPG, or you have like a short story written, or something like that. You know. <laughs> very, very good. This is the intuition, the creative juices coming out. And as a final pitch to prospective producers, because I'm sure one of these games will be picked up by somebody out there. A game development studio will look at these games and be like, "We've missed the trick here. We need, we need to make this." You've got your whiteboards and your pads in front of you. Draw me the main character from your game. So you have one minute to draw Ooh. the character. So we have Simon Starkiller, Yoshi Mizu, and Edge Maverick. Let's see a rendition from the designers themselves. One minute, starting now. We can weed out the artists among the YouTubers, hidden talents. Oh, there's a reason why I wasn't an art teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Way there. I want to see accessories. I want to see personality. I want to see hairstyles. I want to <laughs> add the own personal flavor to to your game. Okay, the last ten seconds here. I can see Zygor scribbling away. That must be some kind of shading or or hair texture. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. So first and foremost, let's go round and round. Let's go with. Simon Starkiller. Let's see what Simon Starkiller looks like. Oh, God. <laughs> so he's got one of those, like, you know, rice farmer hats, in case that's not clear. There's stars falling from Ooh. the sky that he's catching. He's got a little sword. Very he's got a little rigid. kimono and some sandals. He's a, like a tr traditional Ronin-looking guy. And he that is. was my Very attempt at a sword in his hand, maybe? The V-neck, the V-neck shirt. I like the attention to detail there. Yeah. <laughs> Strand of hair like a hooligan. But yeah, he's Is got like a little long ponytail looking thing, yep. Yeah, but rather rather than the Vietnamese star Ronin, that looks more like a 
like a Mexican hat. Yeah, that's what it ended up being. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. There is Simon Starkiller. Let's look at Yoshi Mizu next. Yoshi Mizu, what do you look like in your dating simulator? Attracting this huge, <laughs> oh, huge... Oh, 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 oh was that me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I who I was. Okay, this is what I have. Wow, that's um, actually pretty good. Okay. I went and I okay, put... Okay, talk me, talk me through Yoshimizu. Okay, I, I drew him and he has a little heart on his chest, on his little shirt, because he's dating everyone. The, the, the best waifus you've ever seen with the biggest boobs. And there's flowers and trees in the background to represent the farming. And the sun is out in the clouds because it's a nice, beautiful day. And in his hands... He has his little lightning figures that he creates that fight with him. Fantastic. But what, what I've noticed here is if the if the women are well endowed, he can't wrap his arm around them. His, his arms are quite short. Oh, are they? I should, I should, draw, I should draw the girl. There's the boob off screen. There's... <laughs> Just hit him on the side of the head like a projectile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's in danger for sure excellent okay and last but not least Edge Maverick let's see what he looks like alright sci-fi adventure here he is so this guy <laughs> okay. he, he's got a be- <laughs> he's got a beard long hair he's kind of like a light armored fighter so he's just got like a leather vest and he's got a sword kind of strapped to his back he's he's ready to go to <laughs> battle and fight for what he thinks is right yeah absolutely and a question here so is it the hairstyle that is forcing his head shape like that, or is it a perfect design decision for the kind of heart-shaped head? Uh, no, it's like a widow's peak. It's not. <laughs> okay. My l- lack of artistic talent is really the true answer. <laughs> but, no, it's, it's very good, very good. I can almost picture, like, in Near Automata, using psychic powers to wield that sword. He's just literally, like, <laughs> moving that sword with, with his hair and his mind. <laughs> You know what his shirt kind of looks like? It almost looks like he's doing this. My sleeves aren't long enough, but it's it looks like he's doing this. Like one of, these, <laughs> yeah, <yeah>. one of those. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's approaching the temple with his kind of long robes draped in front of him. Yeah. Oh, oh honestly. Gosh. Okay. So we've, got, we've got the free, we're free perspective RPGs there. We're going to leave it to the fans in the comments. You get your fans on board as well to vote for you because I'll give you a little insight. These five points are actually very, very crucial anyone could win so whoever wins this round mm. has actually won the game wow. <laughs> I, I believe you heard him yeah. vote for me yeah. Simon Starkiller <laughs> yeah yeah so the storm oh, of the yeah. east my goodness <laughs> <laughs> the storm of the east the edge lord the figurine master wow couldn't think of three better characters myself but speaking of, of characters and, and you know as my, my honoured guest here I want you to tell the audience as well what's the next video what's the big project you've got lined up so David Oh, how about you? What have you got um, lined up? Well, I'm still doing more news videos. I actually just finished a review of Grim Grimoire uh, today, um, and I'm also going to be working on the top ten best um, modern strategy um, RPGs because I I did a list of modern 2D RPGs and it did pretty well. So I want to talk about modern strategy RPGs, modern turn-based RPGs. Um, things like that. They, it seems to be a pretty popular topic. And I also want to return to my cozy list as well. People seem to enjoy mm. the coziest RPGs, so I do want oh, to. Yeah. And you know what? My little RPG with my little guy that I just erased. Very cozy. <laughs> <laughs> Keyword right there. Key Keywords make a difference, and cozy seems to be very popular. So It yeah, does, for whatever people. reason. Everybody likes this cozy. It's like game. a new genre now. I know, it really is. Yeah. It's actually very interesting you say that, because like... Certain keywords on, on videos, it doesn't matter how good the video is, really, really kick off. Like in terms of figurines and anime collection, 10 figurines I regret. Just the word regret seems to absolutely rocket boost the thing really? to like a whole host of people. And like, oh yeah, no, I know what you mean. That wasn't worth the money. Oh, I regret that. Just putting regret in there seems to really make an impact. It's kind of Quite funny good. how that works. It really is. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, I've got to make one of those videos. I haven't actually made mine yet, but... <laughs> <laughs> Zygo, over to you. What are you doing? Yeah, next? so... Typical reviews will continue, but the next big one that comes out, and it's already up for advanced viewing for my supporters, is the Final Fantasy III Complete Story Explanation video. Um, I've almost completed the Final Fantasy series, but that one will come out pretty soon. Excited for it. I think it went to it was about 30 minutes, so that'll be it. Hmm. Very cool. Very nice. cool. Thanks for that. Final Fantasy III being the NES Final Fantasy? Yeah, the original Very one. Very nice. Yeah. Original. Okay. 
Very good. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. Taylor, what have you got going on? Yeah, um, right now, just kind of knee deep in reviews. Kind of same with David. I just finished recording the audio for uh, the demo impressions for Grim Grimoire. Uh, still playing through. I got a code for Trails to Azure, so I'm playing through that. I barely have put any time to that, but hoping to get some down this weekend. And then uh, Octopath Traveler Two got really far into that, so trying to just yeah. put a lot of hours into that before I put a video out. So. Yeah, lots of reviews at the moment. <laughs> very good, very good. Yeah, and in terms of like RPGs that made a difference to your kind of personal life, so I'm taking a different spin on some of them from my childhood. I mentioned Genzo Sukuden and Vandal Hearts, and on the last show I mentioned as well just having kind of a guest appearance of what the game meant to you. But in terms of overall impact, a game that made the biggest impact on your life, whether it's decision making or a character that you relate to or something that's memorable, even the music can lift you from your you know moodiness and depression to a high. What is the game that's actually made the biggest tangible difference to, to your life? So, David, over to you. I would have to say Final Fantasy 2 II or 4 for the SNES. I really enjoyed the story um, mm. that came out, I want to say, gosh, I was probably in 5th or 6th grade whenever that came out. And just, I don't know, just Cecil's story of mm. rebelling against authority and doing what he thought was right even if it wasn't the easiest thing to do. Uh, I, 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 I really enjoyed that. I really related to that. And I also related to Rydia's struggle, how she lost her mother at a young age, but then she was still a strong, powerful child. She knew what she wanted, and she got it. And she worked hard, and she became powerful. And I, I, I just I've, the story's always just resonated with me. I really enjoy um, that game. Absolutely, yeah, I can tell how passionately you talk about it. Yeah, I, I know for sure what you mean. It is, it's a well-written story for sure. The characters have a lot of kind of depth to them. You know, they're not just uh, a level. So, yeah, makes sense to me. Zygo, what about you? Uh, for me, it's definitely Final Fantasy VI. I really loved all the twists and turns and kind of the inner struggle within Terra, not really sure where she fits in the world, but finding her way in it. Um, but she wasn't my favorite character. I think Shadow was my favorite, actually. Um, but I loved how the, the game kind of threw the world into the utter chaos where everyone, you know, was so desolate. But the, all the friends made the best of a bad situation, came together and overthrew Kefka. So, um, yeah, that game was so powerful to me. I can always go back and play it. It's always amazing. That's my favorite game ever. So. Yeah, indeed, indeed. I know you do love your Final Fantasy VI, and the question I've got for all three of you, actually, um, is a lot of these characters, um, their backstory is not completely fleshed out, but we've seen with Final Fantasy VII, when you do explore, like, Vincent's past and, and all this kind of stuff, there's a real big kind of intake and, you know, acceptance of those games, and they really flesh out the overall world and the lore and the story of that kind of world. And Final Fantasy VI's cast is huge, and there are a lot of interesting characters like Shadow. Do you think potentially there could ever be kind of money in making spin-offs of these characters that are you know haven't been fleshed out completely just following their one particular story kind of like dirge of cerberus did for vincent is what you're saying yeah or how they interact in the past <coughs> the relationships they had with other characters that haven't been fully explored and you're know, just putting some depth behind what we know of those characters. i would say but, yes i mean looking at the way that the final fantasy series is going right now and seeing um what they're doing i would much rather play a game focused on beloved characters from my childhood that i know and love and learn more about them and be more in their world than see some other generic Mm. setting (laughs) yeah yeah you've got the attachment to them and therefore you know you really want to follow them on that journey and how they got to where they got to and i guess kind of prequel in a way to to a lot of the, the characters at the point where they're introduced into the series here yeah, makes sense to me and uh taylor what about you which game had the most impact for you um let's see probably i would probably say persona 4 which is also my favorite game um i just it like introduced me into a different kind of rpg like it has all these social sim elements because like a lot of jrpgs leading up to that we're just like let's save the world and this was like a little bit different and I really love the character of Kanji because he's like on the outside, he's this tough biker guy. But then on the he has this other side that nobody knows about where he's like knitting little dolls and he might possibly be interested in a, in, a, in a Naoto who he thinks is a guy. So he's like kind of questioning his 
his sexuality and stuff like that. And I think just the whole premise of facing your true self of that game is really interesting. Like, hey, it's okay. Whatever you got going on inside with whoever you think you are, even if people want to accept it, like just be your true self. I think there's something really powerful about that. And then I actually had a real life experience that was kind of cool. So back in the day, IGN had this show called Up at Noon. It was like a talk show that they would film live and they would bring in like voice actors and guests. And one day I suggested that they bring on Aaron Fitzgerald, who did the voice of Chie. And the host was like, oh, it's a great idea. Let's bring her on. And I happened to work in San Francisco at the time. So I got to be in the audience and they like oh, sort of you. mentioned me on the show. So that, and I got to meet her after. So that was just like a whole kind of full circle yeah. fun experience. Absolutely. The, the sentimental value behind that and actually meeting in person as well. Wow. You know, everything kind of collided at the right moment in time for you to be able to do that. That's that's incredible. Yeah, no, that was that was a neat day. Yeah, and Persona Four that's that's the one where you encounter the shadow version of yourself, and you know you mm -hmm. face your kind of self to break off the the kind of stigmas and things that are holding you back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah absolutely. I remember that one. Yeah, that that was good as well. I I think for me personally, going back to Genzo Suiguden, the the real thing that hit a, a note for me, it's unlike Final Fantasy where you're against an unseen evil and a big monster and things that can't exist. It's just people versus people on the opposite side of the war. You know. There's no real right or what's wrong. It's kind of you're defending your hometown. You've got to do what you need to do. There are some people who are, you know, really legitimately evil, badass, want to slaughter everyone like, like Luca Blight and whatnot. But it's basically the struggles of, you know, you've got towns that are struggling. You've got different armies that are trying to conquest people. You're trying to defend your position. You just want to live your life. But you get responsibility thrust upon you, whether you, you like it or not. And then do you take, you know, you as a person, do you, let's talk about the Soul Eater, do you take the responsibility that you might lose your close ones? You might even absorb the soul of your close ones to, you know, save the, the kingdom or, you know, to, to liberate the people and give them the freedom away from a corrupt empire. And it's just that kind of, you can be the hero. You might get that one opportunity in life to get that chance to do something. And the line is fate changeable, is destiny changeable. So that really kind of struck a note with me because it's kind of like, if you do something or say something, then the chance of something happening is not zero. But if you do nothing, the chance is absolutely zero. And I put that back to dating. So if you ask the girl you're interested in, right, <laughs> your chance is higher than zero. It might be 1%, it might be 0.5%, but at least it's not zero. If you just walk by and too shy and don't do anything, then the chance is gone. So that's that's the impact it kind of made on my life. The thing is, if you really want something or you have an urge to do something, why not back yourself, give yourself a go, give yourself a chance, right? And just uh, just go for it. That's that's my my kind of take on, on games and, and Sukuden and why that, that means a lot to me. I, I guess the the thing I want to go into next is we've we've already done our individual podcasts, so Zygo, Taylor, Dave, hopefully we can get one, one lined up as well, a, a Miyazaki Man podcast episode. Would you guys be up for doing another uh, variant of the uh, Figuring It Out Game Show Edition? These are always good fun for me. Oh, um, yeah, this is cute. This is fun. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely, good. man. It's always fun. Yeah, what I like to hear. Excellent. Cool, cool. So, uh, with that in mind, when I get this video up and running, and I, I'll try to get it up as soon as possible, it's going to be down to the comments below whose game whose game is the, is the best game, the one that needs Vote to be produced. Vote from me! <laughs> Vote from me! <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Zygar 2024, poster. let's Come on, go. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, you know what, for the lows, right? For the lows, whichever game is the winning theory crafted idea, I'm going to compile up into a kind of presentation and I'm going to send it to some <laughs> Japanese studios and I'm going to see just what their response is just for the world. <laughs> and I'll put it online to see the kind of feedback we get. So, yeah, awesome. Simon, Starkiller, Yoshimizu, Edge Maverick. We've got a nice selection here. <laughs> cool, cool. Thank you everyone for, for attending today to giving time to the game show. Um, I'm sure everyone really, really enjoyed this series as well. It was an absolute pleasure having you guys. And once again, Thank you, guys, and we'll speak very soon, okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so cool. much for having Sounds us. Thank good. you. Thank yeah, that was fun, man. Thanks again. That was such a fun episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it, too. Remember to vote in the comments below for your favorite RPG made by the boys, or you can just vote for your favorite creator. Let's see who wins. I will open the voting now that the video is released for two weeks. In two weeks' time, I'm going to close the voting, count them up, let us know what you enjoy about the uh, <laughs> the stories themselves as well. I will compile it up in a nice presentation, send it to all the studios. I'm sure they'll, they'll really enjoy it. Speaking of which, your boy Sai, biggest fan of Genzo Sukuden ever. I've been spending the last year hoarding, hoarding Genzo Sukuden goodies. I mean, I've been buying everything I can find left, right and center. I'm going to be making a lot of content on my favorite game, Genzo Sukuden HD Remaster Remake, coming out this year, one and two. 
spicy, can't wait for that. We're gonna go into background, lore, characters, everything, man. Let's revive that series. Spakudan 6, Konami, you know what I'm doing. Aiden Chronicles as well. Yeah, can't wait for that series. Yeah. As always, I want to give a special shout out to all the loyal patrons supporting this channel. Ultimate Sakura, Zygor Gaming, the Gaming Shelf, Tendai, Craig Coates, Master Killer, with David Vink, Rundi, Sophia P, and Special Yoga, Master Yao, James White, Kobin, Trey, Mark C, T, Don P, Alex M, Ash W, Sometimes Superman. Next could be you. Thank you to everybody supporting this channel. Make sure to send absolutely everyone a goodie from, from Japan. Even if you only donate one pound a month, it's all good. It all adds up. It really helps. Additionally, when the missus comes off maternity leave, this is going to be her role. Content creation, uploading the goodies to all the social media sites. All the patron proceeds go to her and the Mushroom Boys. So, yep, really helps me out. They give me the time to make this good stuff. So, please support them in return. Thank you. Much love.